What's going on y'all, it's your man Pristine, back with another video. Welcome to the full Pristine review for the Sony Xperia 10 Plus. Now if I sound a little weird, man, I'm stuffed up, I can barely breathe, I'm a little under the weather, so that's what it is. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this video. Now, first off, price and specs. The full retail uh, price for this phone is $449.99. I bought this phone from Best Buy. The phone is fully unlocked, GSM and CDMA. Um, you can get this phone at discounted prices if you opt to activate a line with either Sprint, Verizon, or AT&T. <clears throat> If you decide to get this through Best Buy, um, they do not have, for whatever reason, a contract with T-Mobile. Um, so if you want to start service or you want to get service with either Sprint, Verizon, or AT&T, um, at the time of purchase with this phone, you can get up to $100 off. Now, I say up to $100 because if you decide to buy this phone and open a line with AT&T, that drops the phone price to $379.99. All right. If you decide to get this phone through either Sprint or Verizon, it drops the price by a cool $100. So it goes from $449.99 to $349.99. Okay, so be mindful of that. What I did was, since I've already got lines with Verizon, I just added a line with my Verizon account just to get that $100 discount, bought the phone the next day, called Verizon, hey, I started this line and I don't need it. Boom, cancel the line. Okay, it's not like you're signing a two-year contract with Verizon making installment payments on a device. It falls under the bring your own device category. So if you cancel that line, there's no consequences or repercussions for it. You know what I mean? Because the phone that you bought at the time, you bought it outright at just a discounted price of 100 bucks. You know what I mean? So, hey, I'm a hustler with mine, yo. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about saving cheese and I do what I got to do to save that money. So that is an option to you. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do it like that. All right. <clears throat> Don't tell nobody I told you that. All right. Now, um, the specs of this phone. We do have two different variants. Now, this is the plus size. We do have a six inch variant. This is a 6.5 inch, which is the plus. The six inch variant is the Sony Xperia 10. There's some differences there, and I'll talk a little bit about that a little later in the video. But right now, let's just focus on the 10 plus here. All right. So the specs, 6.5 inch IPS LCD full HD 21 by 9 aspect ratio and as you can see that's one of the main things about this phone that makes it different that's one of the main selling points if you're if you're not too familiar with 21 by 9 some of the most uh, uh, some of your favorite uh, uh, TV shows and movies that you watch and that you like to watch over and over if you're just a movie or a TV show buff mo more than the majority of the time that content is shot in 21 by 9 aspect ratios but the reason why you can't view it in such an aspect ratio is because you don't have anything to view it on the aspect ratio either your phone either you're you know still rocking old school 16 by 9 or you've got an 18 by 9 or a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio so if something is shot or recorded in 21 by 9 <clears throat> If I shoot a video with this phone in 21 by 9, which we have the ability to do, but your device that you're watching it on is only a 19.5 by 9, then guess what? You're not going to be able to view the content in 21 by 9 aspect ratio. But with having this device or the Xperia 10, or the Xperia 10, which also has this aspect ratio, then you're able to view the content. You know, some of your, some of your most favorite shows, some of your favorite movies. You can view those in 21 by 9 aspect ratio because this phone has that aspect ratio. You know what I mean? So like I said, and Jay Will, he touched on this and man, uh, plug into his video, you know what I'm saying, of the Xperia 10. He's got the 10 and he specifically talked about people complaining about not being able to view content in 21 by 9 that he shot with the phone. But it's because they don't have a device that has the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, giving them the ability to view it in that aspect ratio. Well, now, if you have the, if you have the Xperia 10 or the Xperia 10 Plus, which, to my knowledge, is the only two devices on planet Earth that has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. If you have one of these two devices, then you can view content in that aspect ratio. And it's sweet. OK, viewing content on this phone is absolutely stunning. All right. So. We've got the we've got the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, 6.5 inches, full HD plus panel, um, 64 gigs of internal storage that can be expanded up to 256 gigs, I believe, um, up to oh, up to 512 gigs. Um, Android 9 Pie, four gigs of RAM, uh, fresh out of the box. What more do you need? Okay. So those are the specs right there, Snapdragon 636 processor. The 10 has the Snapdragon 630 processor. All right, now, 
scaling down to performance. As you can see, scaling back and forth, scale over to Google Now, let that load up a little bit. It's a little bit choppy when that's loading up and then you see as soon as Google Now fully loads up, then it's nice and smooth and fluid. And I know a lot of times when phones have Google Now, when you flip to it, as you're scrolling, it can kind of stutter a little bit as all the content is loading up. But you see now that all the content has loaded and I hit tap to update. Now it's just going to update all the stuff. And I love Google now because this keeps me up to date on all the latest stuff, whether it be sports, um, new releases with mobile phones, you know, keeps me up to date on all these different conferences and things of that of that nature. Um, some of the cats that I'm subscribed to on YouTube whose content that I like to watch, you know, I get notifications here. I mean, so Google now is just is. It's remarkable. It's a remarkable source of information that can be customized to your liking to get pretty much all the information that you're going to want to that you're going to want and need. OK, so just to access that, just swipe to the right and boom, it brings it right up. And as you can see, things are just buttery smooth. Swipe up. This takes us to our app drawer. OK, swipe down. That takes us back to our desktop. Now, there is a dark mode on this phone. And the only thing that I can't understand is why when you swipe up to the app drawer, you cannot turn the app drawer to dark mode, but it's no problem because everything else on the on the device, if you go to settings, oh, well, even settings. Yeah, I can't I can't turn settings to dark mode either, but everything else on this phone is in dark mode. Um, as you can see, I mean, scale down to your quick toggles, all that stuff's in dark mode. And it's not one of those things where it depends on the type of wallpaper that you have. It comes by dark. It comes in dark mode by default, fresh out of the box. And I like that about Sony. And I know a lot of other phones are kind of gravitating to, to either having, you know, dark mode on default or at least giving the option to change to dark mode under the settings because a lot of people are a big fan of it. I understand with Apple's new update, um, dark mode is, is, is going to be a feature that's going to be on the new uh, iOS 12.3 or whatever, whatever it is. You know what I mean? So if you're an iPhone user, then you're going to be able to take advantage of dark mode on your iPhones now. So very, very welcomed feature. So... Again, performance, buttery smooth, nice and snappy here. Getting into my Bible application there. Okay. I just always try to open up some of the most graphic or some of the most content heavy applications just to see how quickly <clears throat> they load up. Okay. Go to SoundCloud, that's another big file. Um, and yeah, you know, data speeds are gonna vary. You know, based on your your, your carrier, um, I'm at my home. I am connected to Wi-Fi, so yeah. But as you can see, as I'm just navigating through the device, if you want to get to everything that's open, you just simply swipe up once. That's going to take you to all of your open applications, and either you can swipe up to get rid of them or just hit clear all, and that's going to clear everything out. Okay. So performance, in my personal opinion, buttery smooth on the Xperia 10 Plus. Now the cameras on the rear of the device. We've got a dual camera system here. We've got a 12 megapixel uh, primary camera, and we've got an eight megapixel secondary camera that is a telephoto lens. And so we do have the ability uh, the ability to take advantage of two time optical zoom while we are in the camera app. The front camera, which is right here on the top there, is an eight megapixel sensor, um, and it's very good as well. Um, so. If you haven't seen already, there is a dedicated camera review that I've done. Check down in the description. I'll make sure that I have the link there so you guys can go ahead and click on that and check that out if you haven't already. And let me know what you think about that down below in the comments. My personal opinion about the camera, it's really good. Um, this is my first time having a Sony camera in a while. And the last Sony phone that I had, the camera was kind of suspect. But I had that the same time that I had my Asus Zenfone 3 Zoom and that camera was just blowing a lot of phones camera out of the water still to this day that phone that camera on that phone is one of the best that i've ever handled in my hand and i've had a lot of phones in my hand and i know that phone got slept on but the asus zenfone 3 zoom it's called zoom for a reason that camera is a beast <laughs> you know what i mean um but here in 2019 sony they made a lot of improvements uh, improvements with their camera tech and um the camera to me on this phone is solid. It takes really good low light photos, which I've displayed in the camera review as well. So like I said, be sure to check out that video and let me know what you think about that. All right, now battery life. We've got a 3000 milliamp hour non-removable battery. Now some have hit me in the comments after I did the unboxing video. It was like, oh man, why such a small sale for such a big device? Trust me, the battery life 
staying power on this phone is remarkable. Don't be fooled by the 3000 milliamps. Okay, it's not like this display is a quad HD panel or a super AMOLED display or anything like that. So think, it's it's a, it's an LCD IP it's an IPS LCD full HD display. So it's not going to take as much juice from the battery as it does the power. Okay? Um <clears throat> The phone has stamina mode, and so if you do need some battery sustainability, then you just turn on that stamina mode, and you know the battery's gonna—it's it, gonna give you significantly more battery life. Now there may be some things that you may have to do without because when you turn on stamina mode, it's gonna cut off some things. So there may be some applications that you may not be able to access, or there may be some features or functions that you may not be able to access. But it has to turn those things off so that it's not absorbing more power from the battery to run those things. Okay, so just be mindful of that. But you do have stamina mode and it's easy to get to. I mean, you just simply swipe down and under the quick toggles right there, boom, you can just hit stamina mode and it's going to turn the phone on in stamina mode. Okay, and it's going to give you that battery sustainability that you're going to need, at least until you can get to your charger to be able to top up. And speaking of topping up, this phone does support fast charge. We do have a type C port down at the bottom of this phone. I was able to charge this phone from zero to 100% in about an hour and 10 minutes. Okay, so that, I mean, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Um, now, I wish the phone had wireless charge compatibility because I'm so used to charging phones that way. The, the build of this phone, um, it's like, um, it's got like a matte finish to it. I'm a huge fan of it because it's not a fingerprint magnet at all whatsoever. I mean, so handling this phone is an absolute joy. I mean, it's nice and thin. It's built to, 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 to comfortably fit in your hand for anybody, no matter what the size of your hand is to wield, whether you got small or large hands, just how thin it is makes it so convenient and comfortable. The fact that around the edges, you can see there how it's rounded around the corner from the bottom all the way around to the top of the device. And so holding this phone, you can see how I'm just easily able to cuff this phone in my hand with no problems at all whatsoever. Okay, so I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I mean, it's a nice premium feel. The phone is a, it's a little heavy because of how tall it is, but it's still a featherweight. You know, it's not going to be one of those things that's going to be so cumbersome. You know, while it's in your pocket, you're going to feel like you've got a weight in your pocket or anything like that. It's it's heavy due you know heavy due to the size. Again, again, this is a 6.5 inch display, um, and you can see it's got a little you know it's got a, you know some thin bezels around the sides and on the bottom. You know, you've got a big chin at the top. Me, that doesn't bother me at all whatsoever. You know what I mean? That 21 by 9 aspect ratio is just beautiful. This phone is going to turn heads. Okay, when I have this phone out, when people see the screen and they just look at the aspect ratio and how tall and how slim it is, they're just like, damn, what is that? You know what I mean? And I love when people ask me those questions because it gives me the ability to go into educate mode. You know what I mean? Because a lot of these devices, people don't know nothing about, man, because they're so gung-ho on Apple or Samsung or, you know, Motorola or LG, you know, some of the bigger name companies. Not to say that Sony isn't a big name, but I mean, I don't really feel like Sony moves a lot of units as far as their mobile division in the United States. I know that they've got a big presence in other markets, but um, yeah, they make some they make some pretty good products, in my personal opinion. Um, so I'm a huge fan of the build with this one. Um, additional features. Now, for one, I like the fact that you've got the one-handed mode here, and it's very easy to do. You just simply type, uh, uh, type uh, excuse me, God, I can't speak, double tap on the little bar down there, and this is your one-handed mode, okay? Very easy. Again, Sony is, they, they understand the fact that this phone is very tall. And so that the, the the height of this phone may be it may be what's cumbersome to people, okay? And you can flip the screen to the left or the right. You can adjust the height of the one-handed mode depending on if you got bigger hands or smaller hands. Okay, I've got small hands, and so this for me is perfect if I need to use one-handed mode. Okay, just tap the screen to get back to that aspect ratio right there. I like how the little bar down there. To switch applications, if you got applications open, let's just see. If I go to my Bible application, all right, and then I go to Spotify. If I just want to quickly navigate through those applications, I just simply swipe the bar to the right. If I want to go to my Bible app, just boom, swipe the bar to the right, okay? And that's the only touch gesture that you have with that bar, okay? Um, and then again, just swipe up. Well. Yeah, there you go. Uh, a light swipe up, and that's going to take you to your recents. And so you can do it this way as well. You know, it's Android 9 Pi. That's the standard. Now, 
I do like the fact that we have the side mounted fingerprint sensor as well and it's really snappy okay so you just simply tap it boom and it's open just like that okay tap and it's open just like that now I wish that Sony did have some other little gesture features like a double tap to sleep or a double tap to wake we do have facial recognition and it's not one of those things where you hold the phone up and the screen and, and the display opens up. I mean, so that's, that's to be desired as well because I've gotten used to that on other devices. So you do have to hit that power key, which is right here. Okay, so you just hit the power key and it scans my face. And there's a little, there's a little lock that's gonna be down there that's gonna tell you whether or not the phone is unlocked. And if it is, then you just go ahead and swipe. Oh, so it didn't do it right there. So let's see, let's try that again. Okay, so now it's unlocked and now I just simply swipe up and boom, I go into, it takes me to my desktop. Okay, so, but I found that, you know, the facial recognition, I mean, it works, but I'm, I've gotten so used to facial recognition where all you do is just hold the phone up and boom, it just pops right to your desktop. So I don't really use it that often. And the fact that when I grab this phone, my thumb is already right there in the fingerprint sensor. I just use the fingerprint and get into the phone that way. Now, another feature that I like and, and I think that, you know, uh, uh, Sony here, they kind of took a page out of, out, of, out of Samsung's playbook with the with the edge display. Now, if I pull up my S10 Plus here and you see that, how I just read my face and just pop right to the desktop right there. All right. Now, on the S10 Plus, you know, we've got the little edge display right there. OK, so you just slide that out and you got apps edge. And you can customize that, which I have yet to do yet, because I don't really play with that much. Well, what Sony did was they're like, we're gonna take a, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna borrow a little something similar, Samsung, and what they've got is something called Side Sense. Now, if you guys can see this little bar right here, right next to the clock, right to the right there, there's a little bar there, and if I double tap on that bar, it brings up Side Sense. What is side sense? Side sense is just like it takes you to you're still on your desktop, but some of your most frequently used applications that you want to access. What side sense does is give you the option to just quickly double tap on that little bar and it's going to bring up all of the apps that you currently use to your liking. So these are customized. So these are all the apps that I that I use on a daily basis, no matter what. So if I don't want to go scrolling through the phone or going into my app drawer, I can just simply double tap on side sense and it's going to bring up these applications. And as you can see, I have the ability to scroll up or down. You know what I mean? So no matter where my thumb sits on the device, I can access these applications just with my thumb. OK, and, I'm, and I can just easily just go into them. Just like that. OK, and you can see the little bar right there on the side on the black display as Spotify was loading up. Now, if you long press on the little bar, You'll feel a little vibration and you have the ability to slide the bar up or down. So you can have that little bar wherever you want it on the screen. You can have it if you, you know, hold the phone with your left hand, you can have it on the left side. And another thing with side sense too, when you double tap it, you can just swipe up on the bar to get rid of the, to get rid of the application. So again, double tap to access it, slide up on the bar to get rid of those apps. OK, and then another thing that you have as well is you've got some settings. And so if you and you can you can customize these as well. And so if you frequently use location, if you don't want to swipe down from the bottom to get to your quick toggles to access location, you can just tap. You can location, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. There's some settings here. So here's some advanced settings for SideSense. And this is just a tutorial here to show you exactly how to use SideSense. You can customize SideSense's behavior. This is where you can customize the applications where you want it at. Um, and yeah, it's a really, really, really nice feature. It really comes in handy, especially with the tall aspect ratio that Sony has here. Okay, so that's a huge feature. I use it all the time. Um, I love the fact that we've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Um, and we've got, um, what's that technology called? Um, <clears throat> it's got a, it's got a 24 bit, uh, 192 kilohertz audio uh, DAC and we've got high res audio. So what that does is it's going to boost the sound. 
of anything, you know, whether it be your headphones, if you're connected to a Bluetooth wireless speaker, you can go under the settings and tweak the sound and it's going to give you some options to be able to really customize the sound so that you can hear that content the way that you want it, the way that you want to hear it. You know what I mean? I'm a huge fan of that, a huge fan of that. Another thing too with the aspect ratio, I like the fact that you can swipe down from anywhere on the device to access either your notifications or your quick toggles. It doesn't matter. Okay, you can swipe down from anywhere. Okay, anywhere in the device. That's huge considering how tall this phone is. So those that feel as though it's going to be a cumbersome task to have to reach all the way up to this phone, I mean, for sure, you're not going to be able to reach all the way up to the top with your thumbs. This is going to be a two-handed operation. But it seems like Sony just really emphasized on the ability to operate this device with one hand. Okay, so it's like if the aspect ratio is too tall for you, simply double tap. You got one handed mode. All right. If you want to access your, your quick toggles or your notifications, just swipe down from anywhere on the display. Okay. If you want to access some apps without navigating through the phone, double tap on side sense and there's side sense. Okay. So there's a lot of things to play with on this device. You know what I mean? And you know, some people may not be huge fans of the aspect ratio. It may be different for some, but my, my, my recommendation would be get the phone and really try it out. You know what I mean? Really try it out. Get to know this device, you know, get to know all of its features and functions because it's a really, really nice device. In my personal opinion, I'm really enjoying it. I'm glad that I, you know, got my hands on this device for review. You know what I mean? Some phones I get them, you know, because people request them, but I know that there's not really, you know, too much about the phone that's going to make me want to keep the device. And so it's like, I'll get it just for review purposes and I'll turn around and sell it or something. Um, or just whatever, you know what I mean? And then I'm on to the next device. But this particular phone right here is unique because for one, there's not too many other devices out there with the exception of the tin that for one has this aspect ratio. Um, it's just as close to a stock Android experience that you're going to get. So if you like stock Android, you know, Sony put a, you know, a couple of their, you know, you know, Xperia apps, the Xperia lounge, all that kind of stuff. Again, it's a Sony device, so they got to drop a little something from them on the device but I mean it's a clean stock Android experience Android 9 Pi you've got the latest software great cameras features functions the new aspect ratio viewing content is an absolute breeze on this device matter of fact here let me cue something up here and you know another thing that I wish too I wish we had dual uh, dual speakers but the bottom firing speaker is pretty loud okay so here let me let me cue something up here just go to my channel and videos and where's one of my camera reviews all right so oh, let's skip the survey oh hang on i hit the wrong button jeez all right Okay, so no matter no matter what you're watching, you can't really tell there just because there's black borders right there. Um, but again, God, this the God, the screen resolution is so crystal clear and beautiful. I mean, viewing content in this particular mode is just in this aspect ratio is gorgeous. Here, let me see, let me um, because I know under the camera app. They've added. So this is the Spider Man, and I'm not sure if I think I I think I I uh, displayed this in the unboxing video. But this is the 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 trailer for the new Spider Man movie, the car the 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 animation one. And just that aspect ratio is just absolutely beautiful. Looking at it through the lens of my camera. This is a Sony 4K camera that I'm using to record my videos now. Um, but even just looking at it through this lens doesn't do this phone justice, man. This is one of those things where you have to just get it in your hands and have it right in front of your face to really truly be able to appreciate the, the screen quality and the resolution and just how crystal clear and sharp everything appears to be. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. I mean, that bottom firing loudspeaker down there gets plenty loud. I mean, so it's going to do the job. You don't necessarily need dual speakers on this device. I'm just saying it's a feature that would have been nice because I've handled so many phones that have that feature. But again, I mean, it's not really a big deal. Watching this movie or any other movie in that aspect ratio, 
is 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 gorgeous. Gorgeous. I mean, so I mean, just to give a quick example, really, of the aspect ratio. I mean, this phone is beautiful. All right. So, who is this phone for in particular? Me personally, I think that this phone is for anybody that wants something different. If you're tired of just you know the norm, if you're tired of notches, if you're tired of the 18 or 19 by 9 aspect ratio, just because that just seems to be the direction that phones have gone, you know, man, I salute Sony for doing something completely different here. Some people may be like, oh, 21 by 9, oh, the phone is so long, the phone is so narrow and sleek and this and that. Well, that's the beauty of this device. It's different. It's a different. It's a different viewing angle. You know, it's gonna give you now the ability to enjoy some of your favorite shows and movies in the actual aspect ratio that they were actually shot in. And a lot of people don't know that. Okay, if you're in the viewfinder in the camera app, you can you can uh, uh, take pictures or shoot video in in 4K at 30 frames per second at the 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And so, if you have other other devices that gives you the ability to watch content in that aspect ratio, then, the, then the, the, the videos that you shoot in that aspect ratio, you're gonna be able to watch in that aspect ratio. So that's another feature, just on top of the fact that it has great cameras front and back. I mean, so again, if you want something different, that's powerful, speedy, a, a, a performance beast, a battery beast, that's gonna, man, you know, give you that battery sustainability, features and functions, you know, speedy and powerful enough to do what you need to do gaming on this phone is going to be a breeze again you know it's got the snapdragon 636 processor four gigs of ram um there is game modes on here so that you're able to take advantage of even some of the most graphically intense games you know you're able to run those things pretty smoothly on this device if you game on your phone so i mean you know it's not going to break the bank and i think that this is a very welcomed addition to kind of warm people up to Sony's flagship device that's going to be coming out later on in the year, which is the Xperia 1, which is going to have the same aspect ratio as this. And just really quickly, the differences between this and the Xperia 10, again, this being the 10 plus, the Xperia 10 also has the 21 by 9 aspect ratio, but it has a six inch full HD LCD uh, or full HD plus LCD panel as opposed to the 6.5. It's got three gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 630 processor rather than the 636 processor, which we find here in the um, in the plus. And then I know that the camera tech is different too. I believe that on the rear camera on the Xperia 10, it's a 13 megapixel primary shooter and a five megapixel secondary telephoto lens as opposed to the 12 megapixel primary and a secondary eight megapixel telephoto lens that we find here on the plus so there are some differences i think the price difference is about a hundred dollars um between the two um but that one's a really good one as well you know jay will he did a really good uh review on the xperia 10 so check that video out if you're looking you know to get some information some real in-depth information on the xperia 10 this is the Xperia 10 Plus, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I got for you. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Pristine Mobile Tech to expose yourself to tons of more videos that I've done like this one. Definitely keep it locked here because I've got so much more content to come. All right? You already know, man. If you like this video, get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about it. I'll be sure to answer any questions. I'll be hanging out in the comments section for a little bit. You know what I mean? And uh, keep it locked because I've got so much more content to come, like I just mentioned. Be sure to hit that notification bell so that every time my videos go live, you can get notified and be the first to check out the videos. And again, get in that comment section and let me know what you think. I'm open to any kind of feedback, criticism, cr you know, constructive, uh, constructive criticism. I'm not hypersensitive, man. That stuff don't bother me. And I've learned a lot, you know, due to you guys' questions and comments and criticisms and whatnot. I mean, so just keep it coming. I appreciate all the love. Much love to all my subscribers. Man, this thing is growing. I just recently hit 5,000 subscribers. And it's, and, man, and it's climbing. I, I really didn't see uh, this thing doing as well as it is. And so, again, I just appreciate all the love. My apologies for not being able to upload as consistently as you guys may like me to. Man, I'm sitting on a bunch of content right now. But, man, life like just, just juggling a full-time job married three kids and just life and its challenges i mean but trust you know what i'm saying i mean i got m much more content to come man so i appreciate you guys being patient with me and rocking with me and i try to be more consistent with getting these videos out because i got a lot of stuff that i'm working on just finishing some edits so that these things can become uh, uh ready to upload to youtube i've got like six or seven different videos that i need to upload that i've just been sitting on just because i've been handling business elsewhere so stay tuned for that and uh man you guys already know, man. Keep it safe. Get spiritually fit. We're definitely living in the last days. Man, the best thing that you can ever do is get Christ off in your life, man. No matter what you got going through, he's always ready to start over. 
Remember that. I mean, God is the he's the he's the God of next chances, not second chances, because as my pastor says, we use second chances. A, that, that was used a long time ago. And so if our existence now was based on a second chance, we wouldn't even be existing right now. You know what I'm saying? So, man, God is always ready to start over. Trust and believe in that. Get them off in your life and keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives, man. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Sony Xperia 10 Plus. I'm your man, Pristine, the host, bringing the content. I'm out, man. Peace. I'll catch you guys in the next video.